the way I do it is it's either a big track or not a big track. Mm-hmm. I'm not going it's, ooh, that's 190 mm-hmm. or ooh, that's mm-hmm. 210. Mm-hmm. Like to me, it's just, it's that's a good one or it's not a good one. You know? <laughs> so, like, Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Northwoods Whitetails podcast. I'm Isaac Young. And I'm Joey Davis. And we're sitting down here in southern Vermont tonight, and we've already been talking about deer hunting for probably two hours or so. We sure have. We haven't turned anything on. <laughs> no. <laughs> Got to get the, the mouth warmed up. Well, yeah, no, definitely used to these mics. Yep. It's a little different. A little different hearing yourself. It sure is. It sure is. Yeah, so... so um, what uh, what are we trying to accomplish here with the podcast? So we are creating a podcast, um, Northwoods Whitetail Podcast. We're really not quite sure what we're going to call it yet. So if anybody's got any good ideas, maybe let us know. Um, Open to suggestions. Yeah, but uh, for all of you that uh, know Northwoods Whitetails, obviously you guys know that it's growing and um, we're headed down, you know, some different roads with things and a podcast is one of them uh we feel as though we've got uh, a bunch of stories to share amongst ourselves as as well as a bunch of guests you know we're gonna interview some people and talk about some stories that they have and, and right uh, yeah no it should be a good time yeah yeah definitely yeah i um uh, i did the stagger cast podcast all last season and that was a lot of fun but um ended up going this direction uh, this year I'm going to do the Northwoods, you know, Whitetails podcast. I've been doing the producing for the videos, um, at Northwoods. So it kind of seemed fitting, uh, to just, you know, play another role basically. Yeah. But, uh, I left stagger cast on good terms. I hope Greg and Adam kill it. You know, they got a good thing going and, uh, they've been interviewing some good people. So I'd like to, you know, Wish them nothing but the best. Yeah, they'll they'll do good things with it. Yeah, and that that podcast they released the other day with the Adirondack Boys that was that was classic. That was good. Yeah, good stuff. They'll they'll do well. Adam's taking off with his wool. Yep, we got Stagger so. Wool. That's all doing really well. I think he's got some other products that coming down the pipeline for yeah. next year. So yeah, yeah, we'll nope. see. You. Yep, good bunch of guys. But yeah, so we have created our own and. Um, uh, Maybe just a little bit about Northwoods Whitetails, you know. Some people might see us, obviously, as content creators, which yep. which we are. Um, why we created Northwoods, how Northwoods came about, um, and what we're looking looking for it. And uh, Yeah, why did you start Northwoods? <laughs> ah, boy. You know, it wasn't really myself that started Northwoods, to be quite honest. You know, I was approached by uh, a good buddy of mine, um, Dustin, who's part of the team. Yep. And one of his friends, uh, Tyler, and a filmmaker. And, you know, right out of the gate, we decided that, yeah, sure, we just jump into this thing. I knew nothing about filming. Those guys didn't really know anything about filming. Tyler was a businessman, got a hold of Loophold, along with other companies, and produced a cinematic tracking video. And I was hesitant at first. I just, I'm not one to share much. Uh, right. On what I do, social media. You don't media. like self promotion. No, I don't want to self promote nothing. You still don't. Yeah, I still don't. <laughs> I know you look at my Facebook page. It's yeah. really. Yeah. I've probably killed twelve deer since I posted the last one on there. I just don't. Yeah. To me, that's not why I do it. Right. Uh, so I was very standoffish the first couple of years that we did it to the point where, I think the second year I didn't even have anybody follow me with a camera. Right. It just. I don't know. It's just very, very, very standoff to the whole, the whole thing. It's different. Yep. It's not something you're used to or ever thought of probably doing. Yep. You know, so we kind of were at a point, you know, where we were headed a different direction. Like I wanted to create a team, Mm -hmm. you know, another guy did not. And we just kind of went separate ways. You know what I mean? Yep. And at the time, I owned the name Northwoods Whitetails. That was like my envision from day one was 
Northwoods whitetails. Mm-hmm. That's just what I hunt is the north. Yep. So, so you know, right from the get-go with those guys, I said, we need to create a team. We need to create a team. There's only so much content that, you know, a couple guys can can create, yep. let alone one guy per se, right? Like sometimes you're just going to have off years. It just, it just is what it is. And if you can't show a buck, it, it, it's tough. Yep. You better be a good hunter to show – the trials and tribulations along the way. Yeah. Um, and some guys can, right? Like there's, there's, there's multiple guys that can do it, but we necessarily couldn't. And we wanted to show hunts. Yep. So we created a team, right? Um, most of you know who's on the team, but it's consists of Isaac Young, Connor Schlong, um, John Wright, Travis Williams, uh, John Moulton, Dustin Martin, uh, Brent Dragon. Who else have we got on there? Jeff Doyle. Jeff Doyle. So there's a few of us. Yeah. Um, all of which are very good hunters that all wanted uh, the same end goal, right? Like inspire others. This is all about inspiring the next generation below us. Um, the average age of our subscriber is I think it's 26 to 35 years old. They're, they're young guys, right? They're young guys. They're motivated. They're in their prime. Yep. They're starting to create a family, right? The whole idea behind this is if we can inspire those guys, they're going to bring their kids up through that, right? Right. You're going to keep it going. Yeah. The the, the wheel keep, starts turning. Keep the traditional right? life. You yeah. know, it's not, not, not our intent to flood the woods with – with other hunters right. uh and we never will right you and know you know that there's there's always the guys that want to throw that argument out there oh my gosh you're showing all these guys how to track the woods are going to be slammed with people boot tracks everywhere it's just not true no. because it takes a certain kind of dude to do what we're doing yeah and that certain kind of dude is a rarity it sure there's is. not a whole lot of guys that can do what we're doing. No, I mean, you know, most of it, honestly, like most of the trackers that I know, um, I will say most of them own their own business. Yeah. Right? They're highly motivated individuals yep. that that hunt this method. Most of them all own their own business. Super, not. I don't want to say super motivated right. individuals but they are definitely motivated i think they're they disciplined yep discipline. discipline is a good word to you know because to be a tracker a lot of times you'll have a whole season and you know you only get a couple good days to track mm-hmm. so you have to be firing on all cylinders on those couple days you know which takes a lot of like mental whatever you know not to be overwhelmed with the situation to kind of stay cool calm and collected and just do your thing but then on another hand it's like you got to make sure that you got all your ducks lined up in a row so you can take that day off Mm -hmm. which i think takes a lot of discipline you know yeah and i think it relates to i mean you can relay tracking bucks to to anything in life right like there's ups and downs of all of it um and i guess in a business right being a having a business sense uh, that motivation, there's failures that come along the way, right? It's how you respond to that, those experiences, right? And a lot of that has to do with tracking. I mean, your what's going to make you a better tracker is the experiences and failures that you have. That's gonna that you're gonna learn from, yeah. Right and to put you to put you further ahead. The more bucks you track, yep. The better the, you get. The better you get. The more you're going to learn. Yeah. It, and learning from your mistakes. That's exactly it. Because it's, it's, I think sometimes it's easy to not learn from your mistakes and just keep doing the same old shit over and over again. But, you know, actually, you know, acknowledging a problem that you may have with how you're tracking or whatever. I mean, I think that's hard to do too. Yeah. To be self-aware that, okay, I'm doing something wrong and i need to fix it Mm -hmm. you know it's it's a lot easier to just keep going through the motions and oh geez i never get a buck i track and track and track and i never get well have you ever sat back and thought about why you're not getting them yeah there's a little bit more to it there's a little bit yep 
So, yeah, so that's part of the reason why we created it, you know, and, and it's not us. Nobody's trying to self-proclaim here, right? Mm-hmm. Like, the whole mission behind this uh, is not to self-proclaim anyone. It's to do it as a team, right? right. Like, I'm not going to sit here and toot my horn. You're not going to sit here and toot your horn. We're going to do nope. this. We're going to do this as a team. And we're going to show what works for us and what doesn't work for us, right? But doesn't mean that what works for us is going to work for you. Everybody sees the woods differently. Oh, yeah. That's the beauty of it, right? There's a hundred different ways to do it. Mm -hmm. You've got to figure out what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Yep. That's just the simplicity part of it. The more that you do it, the more times you track bucks, the more that you will learn. It's more about timing. Mm. than it is anything else. Yeah. It is all about timing. Good luck, luck involved there. Yep, 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 you yeah. know. So, yeah, um, in terms of the team, good bunch of guys. It's a variety of age so that we touch on all all aspects of it, right? There's, 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 there's the youth and there's the, I don't want to call them elders, but there's elders <laughs> and then there's the middle age like myself. Um, yeah. You know, to, 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 to reach everybody, um, you know, we're doing this as a team. Um, we're just trying to make some good hunting videos. Yeah. Pretty much, you know, yeah, you know, some good tracking videos. Yeah. You know, a, a solid foundation, um, you know, and, and with any, with any foundation, a su- successful team starts with leadership. Yep. Right. So I think we've got some good leaders on there and we'll see what we do. I mean, year one, I mean, we, we, we killed a lot of bucks. A lot of bucks on film, too, for yeah. guys that had not a clue what they were doing, like myself. Yeah, I mean, I would like to say we're in our infancies yeah. of filming yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're very, very new. <laughs> very new. And it's driving me nuts because uh, I'm trying to put these uh, put these things together. Um, but, you know, I've only been doing it for, like, I think this was my fourth year filming. Yeah. So I'm technically in my very early stages of doing this, yeah, you know, so we're all going to learn together as we go. And, you know, I'd like to think five years from now, we're going to be putting out some like absolute banger hunt videos. Yeah. I think, and, I, you know, I think this team, uh, is going to put, um, the Northeast hunters on the map in terms of like big woods, you know, hard, hard hunting, right? Like yep. this isn't the Midwest. Um, And I can say that I've hunted all over the Midwest. I absolutely love it. I think everybody should experience it. But it is not hunting the Northeast. Like, your effort equals your reward. Right. Right? Like, I would say killing a 200-pound buck in the Northeast is like killing a 180-inch-plus deer in the Midwest. Yeah, I agree. It's that uncommon, and it's that difficult, right? Yeah. But it, it... in the Midwest, it's getting to be not about how skillful you are or your woodsmanship skills. It's how much money you got, how much money you got, yeah. how manicured your property is, yeah. how much money do you want to leave standing so that those deer will come feed on it in the end yeah. of December and January. It's it's a rich man sport in the West, right? Like, yep. don't get me wrong. Like, I go to Illinois every year. I have a piece of ground that I've leased for 10 years. I absolutely love it. I take my whole family out there. My wife, Bo, hunts. Like, cash is there. Right. My in-laws. Like, it's a good time, and everybody should experience it. But I can't wait until the moment that I land back in the North Woods. Yep. And I'm just packing miles on. You know what I mean? Yep. I mean, that to me is successful. It's definitely your personality, though, because a lot of guys would go out there and they'd a lot of guys do go out there and they never hunt back here again. Mm-hmm. They get spoiled yep. per se. But yep. you know, I think it that goes along with your personality of being a tracker. You're just one of the few guys I think that likes to bow hunt and track. Mm-hmm. Usually it's not like that. Yeah. I like I'm like that too. I love to bow hunt. You know, I kind of grew up in an area where the bow hunting is decent. It's mm-hmm. not Midwest, but it's better than where you grew up probably. Mm-hmm. But, you know, a lot of guys it's one or the other. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I mean, I love both worlds of it. Um, it's just, yeah, tracking, tracking bucks for me. And, and, and 
I started that way, right? Like I started track and box. I was around guys that were track and box at a very, very young age, you know, and I went to Northern Ontario when I was in my early twenties killing smashers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every single one of those buck I killed track and, and when that went to hell in a handbag, I went to the Midwest, right? But I also had experienced the Midwest when I was young. I'd, you know, had somebody that influenced me to take me to Illinois and, you know, I saw both, both sides of it, but when Ontario went to hell, I started hunting down there, right? Hunt the Midwest, come home, shoot, right. a, shoot a buck in Vermont with a rifle. And, yeah. and we, and then we had a tag for muzzleloader. So there was just a week off, right? Yeah. And maybe you'd go somewhere, maybe you didn't. And then you were right back at it, chasing them. Right. I didn't go nowhere. Right. Um, and I think as time evolved, I was like, well, geez, like this Midwest is fun and everybody should experience it. Right. But it's not the same kind of challenge as, you know, strapping the yeah. old, the old, uh, green plaid on yep. grabbing your old man's 30, 30, sending out in the woods yep. and challenging yourself. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely much sweeter. I think when you kill one up here, right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You know, is. would you ra like personally, would you rather kill a 160 inch buck in the Midwest or a 225 pound buck in the Northeast? Oh, 220. All That's all what day, I'm saying. Baby. It's, it's, it's yeah. different. Yeah. And you're going to work to get that sucker out of the woods. Oh you know? yeah. And that 160 inch buck yeah. in Illinois. Yeah. I'm going to go get a buddy side by side and I'm going to drag it out, go <laughs> yeah. drive it out there, pick it up, load yeah. it, drive it across the cornfield. Yeah. It, 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 to each their own, right? Yeah. Like when I go out there and I tell those buddies, like, ah, I just can't wait to get back home. You know what I mean? And, and, and yeah. track box, they're like, why? Like, why? You hunt with a gun. You yeah. know what I mean? Because they're all bow <laughs> yeah. hunters. You hunt with yeah. a gun. Like, isn't yeah. that, don't you think that's a little unfair? And I yeah. was like, Come dude, on you up. don't have a clue what hunting <laughs> yeah. really is about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> unfair. Yeah. 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 But, um, yeah. So, so the foundation of it, you know, I think we've got a good group of guys. I yeah. think this thing will go. I mean, um, I do too. We've got a lot of positive feedback from it. Um, which is, which is helpful to, you know, to hear. Yeah. You know? Um, I think what we're doing is very niche. There's not many guys. There's a lot of solo guys that are yep. doing things like this, but there's not a team of guys that are doing it and to skilled, the level, to skilled, the level at where we're doing it. Yeah. Skilled, yeah. skilled, skilled, skilled woodsman, right. Yeah. Uh, track and box. I think. Uh, and I meant on the filming aspect too. Yeah. Like to the level of the, like there's, there's definitely teams, but mm -hmm. they're, they're not like, we're going to try to we're going to try to produce like super high quality videos. Yeah. And we're going to show you the story, right? Yep. Like we're going to yep. show you the story from the second we get out of the truck yep. to the end of the hunt. That's, that's, that's how we're going to do it. You yep. know, a lot of it's going to be on, on a GoPro. Some of it's going to be very cinematic, right? Times yep. that we have cameramen behind us, but I can tell you from personal experience, Lugging a camera guy through the woods yep. is very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's hard enough to sneak up on a buck solo, mm -hmm. try doing it with two people. It is extremely difficult. And the amount of days that we get within that month span to, to, to sneak two people through the woods in those ideal conditions. It's tough. You're, yeah, you're talking about maybe a day, maybe two. Like, it's extremely tough, right. you know. Um, the, the, the guys that replicated it, the guys that did it the best were obviously the Benoits, right? Yes, those sir. those videos, those they're legends in their day, right? Yeah. Some of the Lanny videos, yeah, are just yeah. unbelievable. But they did it in a time and in a place where you could do that. You mm. know what I mean? Like they did have some northeastern they stuff did. though. They did. Like that one, I think it was Shane in New Hampshire and he comes up on this big huge buck way up high on this mountain yep. he stands up and the gun goes click i don't and know was Do larry was larry behind him larry was like, running the camera and point point yeah. the gear out to him oh my god giant oh like chocolate like, oh arm yeah. right on top you of know the exactly oh, what I'm oh about. yeah oh yeah. yeah and he just yeah. he's like he's he's telling him where where it is where it is and then all of a sudden it, i think it moves moves a little bit or something giant he, buck yeah oh yeah boom 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 yeah he never touched it yeah oh man like yeah. that that is probably one of the best northeastern tracking videos ever put out. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know if they have a lot more. I think they had a lot of Maine stuff too, though, didn't they? They had some Maine stuff. I think they that had stuff's Northern hard to come by. And then everything was Ontario, but uh, yeah, they, 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 they did. The guy that uh, filmed them there, that Tom, 
Tom Blaze, I think it yep. was. Did a phenomenal job. I, that guy was a hunter too, right? Yeah. So he knew how to move through the yeah. woods and everything else. Um, yeah, they did. They, they that. I think we can get to there. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. We'll, we'll, we're gonna try like hell. Yep. So, um, you know, one thing that we we aren't gonna do is uh, create a great big team. We're gonna keep this thing small. We got a handful of guys. This is a hand picked team. Um, we're gonna we're gonna keep it this size. It's a lot easier to run operation wise, uh, communication wise. Right. Um, you know, we're not gonna. It's not gonna be a. a, a a 30, 30 member team. It just, just isn't something that we want to do. We, we, we are going to do our own thing. Keep and it head, small. Yep. Yeah. Head, head down a, a path that we know we want to head down. Right. You know? Yeah, I agree. So, yeah. But, um, all right. So on a different topic, I want to ask you, what is the allure behind tracking a 200 pound buck? It seems like it is the benchmark in the Northeast amongst a lot of guys. Yep. It, it seems like this 200-pound benchmark has blown up in recent years. Yep. And we're killing way less 200-pound deer now yep. than we were 10 years ago. But it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's gaining popularity. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think very easily said it's very hard yeah that's why it's so cool yeah because of how rare they are and and um you know how much uh, luck skill everything plays into a 200 pounder you know it's just kind of that magical number because you and i both know 185 pound bucks big old buck Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it's not a 200 pounder but right that's where that little bit of luck comes in sometimes there's there's a good chance that that 185 pounder's got better antlers than that 200. That's for that's darn true. Sure. And see, I'll that's I'm going down a different path right now, but I will always take 185 pound track. Yeah, yeah. You'll never see me stepping over yeah. 185 pound track. Yeah, and I think that ever. I think that goes. But I think it's where I was brought up. Yeah, and I think yeah. that goes for where you're hunting too, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. you know. Um, in your turf, that's us. That's a wicked buck, yeah. right? I that's know. a real good yeah. deer. You know, you take that deer and you throw him in the north. He could have age to him, yep. Or he may not, right? Like, right. Just like, just like humans. Just like, yeah, they're all different. Yeah. Yep. Some, some, some people have big feet. Some people don't. Yada yada yada. Yeah. That buck could be a two and a half year old, hundred and eighty five pound buck. Yeah, you know what I mean. Or he could be a seven and a half year old, one hundred eighty five pound buck with one hundred fifty inches on his head. You, you, right, you don't know. You don't know, and you're not going to yeah. know until he's laying on the ground. And the way I track, you know, because I've been tracking for about ten years. That's like very, like I was seventeen when I really started hitting it hard. Started heading to the mountains when we had snow with with my own truck and and doing my own thing. So I've been doing it for ten years now, and and still, the way I do it is, it's either a big track, or not a big track. Mm-hmm. I'm not going. It's ooh, that's one ninety, mm-hmm. or ooh, that's mm-hmm. two ten. Mm-hmm. Like to me, it's just it's that's a good one, or it's not a good one. You know, so like, <laughs> and. It, that's just the way I am. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I probably will always be that way. Yeah. I kind of go crazy in Maine because <laughs> they're all good ones. <laughs> there, there's some good ones. Yeah. There's some good ones. Yeah. I, um, I have an indicator in my pocket. Yep. Uh, and it is pretty spot on okay. and we'll do a video sometime. We'll drop that video, um, on the YouTube, uh, to estimate yep. the size of the buck before you even, step foot on it right we'll, we'll we'll do a video at some point but do you think a lot of guys have ever even seen a 200 pound buck track that in this country down here in southern vermont not many have yeah not many have yeah no um, i feel it's the same way you know we might be somewhat south but we're in the same mountainous yeah. region right no not many have no no even around no. even even around where i live i don't think many people have ever seen a 200 pound track once yeah. they see it, they're not going to forget it. Right, yeah. So, and I might as well get this <clears throat> right off my chest now. I've never killed a 200-pound buck tracking. I've only killed one 200-pound-plus buck, and it was still hunting. Um, but I know for a fact I've seen a 200-pound track just because 
I was tracking a buck one day. I jumped it, couldn't get a shot, ran it right up by my buddy who was hunting with me, and he shot it, and that weighed 200. Yeah. So yeah. I know I... I know for a fact I've at least seen one. Yeah. That was a Vermont deer too. Yeah. And um, but you know, I got one one ninety four and a half. That was pretty close. Yeah. But then like one seventy nine. But you know, I haven't killed a lot of big heavy ones tracking. Yeah. But you know, I haven't been doing it that long. And in the area, Let, you know, the areas I'm in aren't really. And and for everybody that's listening, Isaac, how old are you? I'm 27. Yeah, and I'm yeah. 40. So. Yeah, right. I know. <laughs> there's, 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 there's an age difference there. There's there a is. lot of, there's a lot more years of experience under under my side of things, right? Um, and you know, however many years, I'm not going to do math, but you know, 13, 13 more years, years, you're going to have yeah. just as many encounters, if not way more than I have, right? Right. Well, and it's areas I hunt too, like the one I got in Mass and two years ago. Um, I mean, it's as big as he would have ever been. He weighed 158. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know? The, and this deer is a giant. If you yeah. if you guys could see him, like the head on this deer is huge. And, you know, that is a skill that I, I'm i happy I learned hunting in this area is I've been able to pick out big buck tracks when they don't have big feet. Mm -hmm. And the biggest indicator for me is when they turn their front feet out. Yep. I pick that up wicked young mm -hmm. um you know because it was a pretty good rack buck right around my house and he would always walk with like his feet turned out and, yeah. but his track was very uh comparable to like any other track around but he would turn his feet out okay so that's the way i kind of like i kind of noticed that and then you know i think it's like anything anything it's like arthritis or whatever they oh yeah like and i've heard a lot of trackers actually talk about it like timmy boldick and like other guys um he's actually a farrier so he's yeah super in tune with yeah feet hooves feet yeah. and yeah. you know they they turn their feet out when they get old at hunting in place like massachusetts where maybe the buck's not going to be as big as the north country yeah you have to pick up on those subtle you can you can see it right like yep. you, you there's 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 certain characteristics around every track yep. that you can you can pick apart right yep. like not not always you know like just a, for instance i i tracked a buck the last day of the season down down there that was a 180 plus pound buck he was a really yeah. good buck but he was just a young deer he didn't have much for antler right that yep. year and it just wasn't something i wanted to shoot same right. thing but you can tell you know a dog a, a, a 10 year old lab yeah you can go out and look yeah Look at his track in the snow, and you can go back and look at your four-year-old lab's yeah. track in the snow, and there is a considerable difference between yep. the two. Yep. Yeah. The, yep. the old ones will walk on the back of their feet more, too. Mm -hmm. yep. But, you know, I've also seen the opposite of what I'm saying. The biggest rack buck I ever hunted in Vermont walked up on the top of his toes, and his track was two inches long. Yeah. So yeah. he ended up getting shot. Yep. And uh, he weighed 178 pounds, stressed out, okay. give or take a pound. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly, but, you know, he literally, he walked, by, the only reason I know what his track looked like on snow is because Gilly was filming for me one day and we went up into this piece where I had a camera all season, nothing crazy on it. I think it was second to last day of muzzleloader. And I go up in there and buck track goes across the camera like that day. And I'm like, Gilly, what do you think that is? I'm betting it's a spike horn. He goes, that's a button buck, like tiny little thing. And no we kidding. checked the card, 4 o'clock that morning, this thing walks by, and he's all of 140, 44, 45 inch mm. buck. And we're like, oh, my God. We couldn't believe it. Mm. But, you know, it just goes to show you, like like you just said earlier, they are all different, you know, and you don't know – you don't know it all yeah. just based off the track. Yeah. I mean, we make our best educated guess, yep. you know, and maybe if I would have followed that track for a ways, mm -hmm. you know, it was late in the day, so I couldn't, but, and the snow was melting, but you, you're not going to know until you stand that deer up. That's really Right. It. And that's most really of the time yeah. when you stand that deer up, yeah. I, this is my opinion of it because I hunt the North, right? This is, this is a super close counters. Most of your deer are going to, when they get up to go from you there, they're going to be between 20 and 50 yards. It's just, mm. it's very, very close. Most of them aren't even 50. Most of them are, 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 are 30. You're like right? right on top of them. Right on top of yeah. them. When you come down more, you know, to the hardwood type country, 
when you're tracking those deer, you can stand them up and maybe, or you catch them bedded a long ways away and you can identify them and you shoot or you don't shoot, what you know, whatever you, you decide, right? Yep. For me, hunting the north, uh, if I'm tracking a buck, it is solely about that buck track. And I don't care what it's got, as long as it's got bone on top of its head, I identify it's got a rack of you some kind. I'm shooting it. Yeah. But until I walk up to that thing, I don't know what it's got unless for some reason I saw a very good glimpse of that deer. Right? Or it's real big. Or yeah, it's or real it's big. or it's real big, right? Like yeah. you know, a lot of guys they'll go through a thick patch of woods and they they'll stop following it. Ah, it doesn't look you know, went through wicked tight area, you know, I'm it does, must not have much for horns. Right. Let me tell you that that is a false opinion on things. oh yeah i know <laughs> i know one of those buck that i killed in ontario um went between trees that were like 16 inches apart and i was like what is going on yeah. i mean the deer weighed 260 scored 184 yeah. right you you can't you can't distinguish right like yeah. sure he doesn't have 20 inches of antler on his head but maybe he does yeah You've, 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 I've yeah, seen moose go through some pretty tight areas, 60 yep. inch bowls that will twist their head one way or the other and they will go through it. Yep. I find antlers in the craziest spots, oh, yeah. you know. He was 20, he's 23 inches wide and he was pushing Christmas trees. Like, yep. pu- like I was going sideways mm-hmm. and he was pushing through them and that was before I jumped him. Yeah. Like that was just his like natural, yeah. that's what he did. There was a uh, clip, I wish I could find it and show you guys, but there was a clip on Instagram, I saw of a huge mule deer going underneath a gate. Did I you see it. this oh, thing? Yeah. I, saw I mean, it was 30 inch wide mule deer. He yeah. put one side of his rack underneath yeah. that fence, s- s- lifted his head up underneath, yeah. stuck the other side in, and then dropped his back right I up mean, underneath it. Technically, do you think they can feel a little bit with them? Yeah, I would say I that they, they, know, they know what's going on above there's them. There's blood, right? That goes yeah, I mean, through them. Y- y- they know what they got. Yeah, they, they have to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they must have some feeling because I know if you, sh- well, I don't know if it's because of the shock, but I know I've heard people say they've shot a deer in the antler and it like stuns Stun- them. Yeah, stuns them. Yeah, uh, some of them, it'll knock them right out. Knock them right out. Well, maybe yeah. that's just from the impact, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, could be. But yeah, no, so it, it does seem like the allure of uh, tracking 200 pound bucks is, is growing. Um, you know, like I've got a lot of good buddies that are serious hunters in the north and I don't want to say they bitch about the amount of people that there is up there, but they bitch about the amount of people that there is up there. And I don't think it's that there's any more trackers in the woods. I think that a lot of these people are getting pushed out of other areas and the north is where they're headed, right? But at the same time, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of available access into this ground now that there, there wasn't before, right? 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you know, a lot of these places didn't have roads into them. Right. The roads that were into them, the bridges were pulled, yep. you know, culverts were pulled, roads were rocked off, or they're gated. And you don't see that now. And I think that is a big thing, you know, us creating that next generation of Northwoods enthusiasts, right? People to protect that land how we know it, and we love it, right? Yep. We see garbage, we clean it up on the side of the road. We see somebody doing stupid we're gonna, stupid things, we're going to say something to them, right? Yep. Like, we love this woods. Don't, you know, yeah. leave it leave it better than the way that you found it is, is the attitude to have. And I think when, as we, you know, try and inspire this, I guess, above all else, is to create believers that that love this land, that want to protect this land, that maybe some of them see what I see in a way and realize that, hey, we need to put more gates in. We need to make this land less accessible. Mm -hmm. In doing so, I'm going to use Pittsburgh as an example. It's not the fact that Pittsburgh's broken, because it's not. Pittsburgh is unbelievable deer hunting, has a pile of deer up there, unbelievable yarding grounds and they feed deer right Mm -hmm. it's the fact that there's so much available access right and there's no more pieces of woods that are good sized chunks of woods 
and it gets hunted and that age structure has dropped yeah and every year it's just shooting small box after small box after small box they do shoot good ones i'm not saying ones that they that don't slip through the cracks kinda, yep. yeah yep you know every year there's a couple of good ones that get killed but the the average of the 200 pounders let's say it's three four five of them now a yep. year it used to be 30 or 40 of them it's incredible you know what i mean it's yeah. just the available access is is what it is and You'll see it with anything. You know, you put a gate in, you might see people walk a half a mile, but that's as far as they're going. They're not right. going any further. Yeah. You know, but to the to the guys like you or I, we're going to keep walking. Yep. Right? That's. Yeah. It's, no, I, I think with the whole Northwoods project, let's call mm -hmm. it a project, you know, if we can keep this thing alive, you know, I think we're thinking – we're thinking farther down the road, you know, um, there's a lot of guys, not a lot of guys, but there's one guy in particular and I actually, I'll say his name. I don't care. Matt Ranella. Mm -hmm. He's got this whole hunt quietly thing going on right mm -hmm. now, where he's like totally anti, uh, he's anti hunting social media. He's, he's anti all the stuff that we're doing basically. He's against anybody that's making money off of hunting, right? Oh, money or just putting videos on YouTube yep. for free. Yep. He he hates the promotion of the it. promotion of putting a picture of a dead animal on Instagram, like mm -hmm. he because he thinks that there's too many hunters right now, mm -hmm. um, and maybe there is in some parts of the country. Sure. But um, it's not the case up where we're doing it. No. Um, but but even if there is too many, and he thinks that the hunting media is making, you know, it's making it more, I don't know the words I'm trying to get out of my mouth right now, accessible, um, you know, you get what I'm trying to say? Like he thinks like it's going to make more people go out and do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Prosper off of things. Prosper and, off. And, yeah. and it, I think it's that if hunting media dies, hunting will die. Because unfortunately, like it or not, social media is here to stay. Mm -hmm. And if people, you know, let's say if no more hunting videos got put up on YouTube, no more pictures of dead bucks got put up on Instagram and Facebook, that would just be more... It would be, it would be for the anti hunters, it would be more of a, the, the norm mm -hmm. to, to shun out hunting and, and try to. It's, it's not going to hurt today's hunters. Yes. It's going to hurt tomorrow's, tomorrow's hunters is yeah. what it's going to do. Because once you stop normalizing it, because it is normal, mm -hmm. hunting is normal. We've been doing it literally forever. Like this Matt Rinella, he hates that Joe Rogan is putting bow hunting on this platform that Joe Rogan has, he's the biggest podcast in the world. Yep. That's the best thing for hunting mm -hmm. ever. Yeah. Like, you know, if we want to see this thing continue, yeah, we need to be promoting it and, and promoting the fact that we're using the animals, mm -hmm. um, that we kill, uh, that it's like the best meat you can put into your freaking body that, uh, if we don't hunt these animals, there'll be overpopulation and disease and like, uh, forest problems, you know, or like too many deer, but I'm getting long winded here. But basically what I'm trying to say is we're doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Before yeah. you get off that topic, who is Matt Ranella? It's Steve Ranella's brother. Oh, and does Steve Ranella own meat eater? Yeah. Yeah, I think there yeah. might be some jealousy yeah. involved in yeah, that. Yeah, I would say so, huh? But he's actually gained, like, quite a bit of traction. Yeah. He was just on the Deer Hunter podcast. I listened to what one of I'm, those podcasts. I'm not even going to say what I think about that, but yeah. uh, he, he's, he's like a tyrant. He's a very well educated man. Yeah. I will tell I will yeah, no, give yeah, him smart. that. Yeah. But his philosophies on things are. Oh, my gosh. And I think it's cracked out. selfish. I think yep. it's selfish is what it is because he's saying, well, you know, back in 1984, I could go out on the side of this mountain and, you know, whatever and shoot an elk easy. Yeah. But now there's people hiking in all over the place because of these damn YouTubers showing people how easy it is. 
No, dude. Right. That's not it. Yeah. Maybe you're just getting older. Yeah. Maybe there's, there's a lot some... of selfishness in that. Yeah, there is there's, a lot. Of... There's a lot of selfishness in that. I, he, he said that if you're going out there with a GoPro on your head and killing a deer, like I think he said he named some famous hunter, he said, I hope you fall out of your tree stand. Mm-hmm. Like That is the absolute yeah, I, last thing. I yeah. Did, yeah, I did hear that. That's the yeah. last thing that hunting needs is There's a guy like him. That negativity. That negativity and like, okay, we have enough going against us anyway. Numbers aren't like flourishing, I don't think. No. Maybe I'm wrong, but, you know, we kind of got to hold on to everything we got here. And, and I yeah. think promoting this stuff on YouTube and like Instagram, Facebook, whatever, getting involved with companies that like aren't necessarily hunting companies like darn tough. Mm -hmm. Like we have a partnership with darn tough and they're not a hunting brand. Right. Well, when they start, you know, sprinkling out some hunting socks, Mm -hmm. that's really good for hunting. Yeah. Because all those people that love darn tough socks are going to see that they're promoting hunting and maybe they'll take a look at us and see that, okay, we're, we're not like just, some you know rednecks riding around drinking beer shooting deer at night like mm-hmm. we're actually doing things the right way and yeah you know trying to make a difference but. i think most people you know most 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 non-hunters if they had the opportunity at a young age to actually hunt they probably would they 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 would be hunters today they would yeah um most of them don't get that chance right um it's to, in to, everybody it, to experience it yeah and it's it it's a especially in athletes right oh yeah it it is especially in athletes i can't tell you how many um you know uh, uh, very very good athletes very athletic people yeah that 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 are into hunting that are into tracking bucks you know um bull hunting whatever it may be yeah it's more of a challenge amongst yourself than it is anything else it's it's not about I mean, killing is the necessary evil, right? Yeah, um, it's my least favorite part. Yeah, yeah, and as anybody else's, nobody, nobody likes to take the life of an animal. It's just no. not something that we enjoy doing, you know. But uh, the challenge amongst ourselves to 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 succeed, to be better, um, you know, the hunt, right? Hunt for the hunt. Yep. Um, there's something to be said that, and and back to you know, most people would would hunt today if they had the opportunity yeah they just don't have the opportunity they didn't have somebody that took them out and and shared that you know shared passion with them right so we'll see you know some of some of the uh my good friends that hunt that are very good hunters came from a non-hunting family that just grew up with neighbors down the road that that deer hunted had deer hanging in the trees and and said hey i want to do that you know and the old timer took took him hunting and he was hooked ever since yep you know, a good, a very good buddy of mine. Uh, that's how he got into it. His father didn't hunt. He got into it because there was giant bucks hanging down the road in the chicken barn. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and 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 he is a college athlete. Uh, uh, you know, a Division One ski racer. Yep. I mean, full boat scholarship, and he took to it just like he took to skiing. No kidding. You know. So. Yeah. Yeah, but um, so a little bit about this platform. Something that we want to announce um, is that we are creating this platform for everyone, right? We want to hear your stories. We want to hear your success, and we want to share it on our platform. So to the guys that are interested in self-filming, there is a place on our platform for you. Um, we will obviously, you know, anybody that's interested in this can get a hold of us. You can email, you know, info at NW Whitetails um, and get a hold of us. You can reach us on any of our individual platforms. Um, you know, obviously, there's a little bit more to it. You you, you have to create a story. There's got to be a story involved. But, um, you know, we welcome anyone that wants to do this to get a hold of us, and we will tell you, you know, what we're looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But uh, and we'll we, edit the videos. Yep, we'll edit the videos. We'll, we'll post them. Yep, we'll air them on our videos. We will invite you onto our podcast before that video drops, and tell tell us about your hunt. And uh, and then we'll then then we'll drop it on the on the YouTube channel. Yeah, so, that's cool. It's a good idea. Yeah, you know we we need to do this as a a, a family, right? Yeah. We need to do this as a whole. Um, yep. It's not just about us, right? We're not trying to be selfish here. No, um, it's it's about everybody else, and we want to we want to hear about your success, your stories, and uh, so does everybody else. So that's one of the things that we're going to be doing. We got we got some pretty big things coming down the pipeline. Uh, also, some some that we can't uh, can't announce just yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but but uh, we got some some big stuff. Yeah, some pretty sweet stuff, you know. Um, and I think all of that is just. You know, hard work. Yep. Getting in front of the right people, people yep. that believe in us, and uh, and we'll share it with you here at some point soon. So, yeah, cool, man. But um, outside of that, I think we're gonna wrap this baby up. Um, we're gonna be doing some guest, uh, you know, uh, podcasts here and there. Yep. You know, uh, if you guys have any opinions, uh, stories from people that you want to hear, get a mm. hold of us. You know what? I want to do a lot of old timers that are like super unheard of that have yeah. killed just like mega giants yeah that's what i like yeah those yeah. are the cool ones yeah they, they got, they got the best tell. stories yeah you know yeah yeah so if anybody out there knows an old timer that's killed multiple gheeborbus bucks gheeborbus gheeborbus <laughs> <laughs> let me know get a hold of isaac yeah all right and uh Anybody else listening to this that uh, that wants any kind of partnership opportunities, support the podcast, support Northwoods Whitetails, you guys can email us. Um, yeah, you know somebody that knows us. You can, you can get a hold of us in one way or another. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff, or uh, yep. even the good old cell phone that's yep. out there. So, all right. Want to call it? Let's call it. All right. We'll see you on the next one. See you guys.